Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. I have noticed Devil Tube is recommending a whole bunch of pre-trib rapture dreams of people from all over the place. Well, let's take a look at rapture dreams. All right, so this Bible study is going to be on dreams and visions. Now, like YouTube keeps recommending me all these people having dreams about Oh, the pre-trib rapture is getting ready to happen. It's getting ready to happen. I had a dream. I had a dream. Martin Lucifer King had a dream, too. And uh, for being a reverend Christian, I, you know, I, I, I listened to a lot of his speeches when I was a kid. I never heard him say the name Jesus once. So, you know, I have a dream yeah how about let's go to jeremiah chapter 23 verse 1 woe w-o-e woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture now there's a big difference between a pastor and a pasture Woe be unto the pastors, or ministers, right, that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, saith the Lord. Yeah, you better watch out if you're scattering the sheep of the, the great shepherd. Verse 2, Therefore thus saith the Lord God of Israel against the pastors that feed my people. Ye have scattered my flock, and driven them away. Boy, that's what happened to me when I first uh, started to believe in Jesus when I was a kid. I watched all those TV pastors, preachers on television. Yeah. And if you think Billy Graham was a, a great guy, well, you probably not like my work. So, you know, TBN might be more your... Uh, or the 700 Club. Maybe that'll be more your, uh, to your liking. Thus, I'm sorry, therefore thus saith the Lord God of Israel against the pastors that feed my people. Ye have scattered my flock and driven them away. You know, even as an unsaved young teen, I knew the TV preachers were garbage I could see what a bunch of garbage they were how come people can't tell today when they're adults why that's one of the reasons why I walked away from Christ as a kid TV is filth it's filth Monday Monday through Saturday and then on Sunday morning they want you to think oh well you know uh, they got some wonderful TV preachers on. No, the a book of Amos says, how can two walk together except they be agreed? Television's filth and the TV preachers are no different. How can two walk together except they be agreed? Yeah. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God of Israel against the pastors that feed my sheep. Sounds like starvation to me. Ye have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not visited them. Therefore, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings, saith the Lord. And I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all countries whither I have driven them and will bring them again to their folds and they shall be fruitful and increase. And I will set up shepherds over them which shall feed them and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed, neither shall they be lacking, 
saith the Lord. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch, and a king shall reign and prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. And if you don't know who that is, I'm going to give you a little hint. His name is Jesus. Verse 5 is fulfilled in Christ. Verse 6. In his days Judah shall be saved, and Israel shall dwell safely, and this is his name, whereby he shall be called the Lord our righteousness. Boy, that ties right into what I just did on the um, tabernacle series, right? Verse 7, Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that they shall no more say, The Lord liveth, which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. But the Lord liveth, which brought up and which led the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country, and from all countries whither I have driven them, and they shall dwell in their own land. Uh, which led the seed of Israel, uh, which led the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country. What country's north of Israel? Uh, let's see. Let me get a map here. There's Israel. Go north. Uh, Europe. Wow. Europe. Uh, where did Paul, Paul the apostle to the, quote, Gentiles, unquote, where did Paul go? Uh, Greece and Europe. Italy. I believe Tarshish. Uh, yeah. What, what's, what's north of Israel? Europe. What country printed the Bibles? Europe. What countries built the churches? Europe. And then later America. You know? And they shall dwell in their own land. Verse 9. Mine heart within me is broken because of the prophets. All my bones shake. I am like a drunken man and like a man whom wine hath overcome because of the Lord and because of the words of his holiness. Jeremiah says his heart is broken because of the prophets. All my bones shake. I am like a drunken man and like a man whom wine hath overcome because of the Lord and because of the words of his holiness. Verse 10, for the land is full of adult adulterers, uh, physical or spiritual or all the above. Because of swearing, the land mourneth. Is that swearing in falsehood? You know, bearing false witness? Or is it um, cussing? Or is it both? All the above. For the land is full of adulterers, for because of swearing the land mourneth, the pleasant places of the wilderness are dried up, and their course is evil, and their force is not right. For both prophet and priest are profane. Wow. For both prophet and priest are profane. Yea, in my house have I found their wickedness, saith the Lord. Wherefore, their way shall be unto them as slippery ways in the darkness. They shall be driven on and fall therein. For I will bring evil upon them, even the year of their visitation, saith the Lord. Doesn't sound too good. Verse 13, And I have seen folly. In the prophets of Samaria, they prophesied in Baal, Baal, and have caused my people Israel to err. Baal is just a generic name for Lord, and it became 
so associated with Satanism that the Lord he actually said, don't call me that anymore. They prophesied in Baal Baal, and caused my people to err. That's where you get that word error from. E-R-R. -R. Just put an O-R on the end of it. Error. Verse 14. I have seen also in the prophets of Jerusalem an horrible thing. They commit adultery and walk in lies. They strengthen also the hands of evildoers, that none doth return from his wickedness. They are all of them unto me as Sodom, and the inhabitants thereof as Gomorrah. Oh, but, but Chaplain Bob, that sounds anti-Semitic. I mean, everybody knows Jerusalem's the place of God. Well, tell that to Jeremiah. Verse 15. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts concerning the prophets, Behold, I will feed them with wormwood and make them drink the water of gall. For from the prophets of Jerusalem is profaneness gone forth into all the land. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Hearken not, in other words, don't listen to, hearken not unto the words of the prophets that prophesy unto you, they make you vain. What is vain? Worthless. They make you vain. They speak a vision of their own heart and not out of the mouth of the Lord. They say still they say still unto them that despise me. The Lord has said, ye shall have peace. And they say unto everyone that walketh after the imagination of his own heart, No evil shall come upon you. You're going to be get the pre-trib rapture. No evil shall come upon you. God loves you. God would never let his bride go through the tribulation. God's not a wife beater. Right? They say still unto them that despise me, the Lord hath said, ye shall have peace. And they said every unto every one of them that walketh after the imagination of their own of his own heart, no evil shall come upon you. For who hath stood in the counsel of the Lord, and hath perceived and heard his word? Who hath marked his word and heard it? Behold, a whirlwind of the Lord has gone forth in fury. What's a whirlwind? A cyclone, a hurricane, a tornado. Behold, a whirlwind of the Lord has gone forth in fury, even a grievous whirlwind. It shall fall grievously upon the head of the wicked. Boy, I'll tell you what. You'll never hear this stuff preached in a uh, charismatic church. Absolutely never, 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 never. Verse 20, The anger of the Lord shall not return until he hath executed, until he hath performed the thoughts of his heart. In the latter days ye shall consider it perfectly. What are the latter days? The last days, people. Listen to this, verse 21. I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words, then they should have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their doings. Am I a God at hand, saith the Lord, and not a God afar off? Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him, saith the Lord? Do not I fill heaven and earth, saith the Lord? Oh, yeah. Hey, uh, 
why are they going to hide themselves in the rocks and in the dens? Oh, yeah. How about Hosea 10.8? The high places also of Avon, the sin of Israel, shall be destroyed. The thorn and the thistle shall come up on their altars. Remember uh, Adam and Eve? They were kicked out of the altar, I mean, out of, out of the garden. And they said that thorns and thistles would come up out of the ground it said by the threat of thy uh by the the sweat of thy brow thou shalt uh you know farm until you know dust you are and dust thou shalt return i'm paraphrasing really badly there but the thorn of the thistle shall come up on their altars they shall say to the mountains cover us and to the hills fall on us Luke 23 30 then shall they begin to say to the mountains fall on us and to the hills cover us wow Luke 23 30 quotes Hosea 10 8 wow you'd never know that huh yeah if you don't uh, you know these people that say oh I'm a New Testament Christian you know what do you think the what do you think the New Testament is? It's the new replacing the old. That's all, you know, Revelation 6, 16. What are the wicked going to do? And said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. That's right. They're going to say, fall on us. They're going to try to hide. Back to Jeremiah 23, 23. Am I a God at hand, saith the Lord, and not a God afar off? Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him, saith the Lord? Do not I fill heaven and earth, saith the Lord? I have heard what the prophet said that prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. Wow. I've been hearing so many people on YouTube saying, I had a rapture dream. Praise a Jesus. I have heard what the prophet said, that prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long shall this be in the heart of the prophet that prophesy lies? Yea, they are prophets of the deceit of their own heart, which think to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams, which they tell every man to his neighbor as their fathers have forgotten my name for Baal. Listen to this carefully. The prophet that hath a dream, let him tell a dream. And he that hath my word, let him speak my word faithfully. What is the chaff to the wheat? saith the Lord. This is called parallelism. The prophet that hath a dream, let him tell a dream. And he that hath my word, let him speak my word faithfully. What is the chaff to the wheat, saith the Lord? In other words, a dream is chaff. And God's word is the wheat. What is chaff? Webster's 1828. The husk of corn and grasses. In common language, the word is applied to the husk when separated from the corn by thrashing, riddling, or winnowing. Uh, 
the second is refuge, refuse, worthless matter, especially that which is light and apt to be driven by the wind in scripture, false doctrines, fruitless designs, hypocrites and ungodly men are compared to chaff. Psalms 1.4, uh, Isaiah 33.11, and Matthew 3.12. When you take a corn on the cob and you peel the husk back, that's the chaff. That is the chaff. What is the wheat then, Chaplain Bob? Well, let's find out. Uh, well, Jesus uh, says, compares his word with wheat, right? John 6, 48, Jesus said, I am that bread of life. John 6, 51, I am the living bread, the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give him is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. In Matthew 4, verse 1, then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, he was afterward and hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he, Jesus, but he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And who is this word? John 1 and verse 14, And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. In John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Oh, yeah. In Revelation 19, verse 11, And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in Righteousness. He doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. Oh, yeah. Now, what about this chaff to the wheat? Well, let's take a look. Let's go to Matthew tap chapter 3. Uh, John the Baptist speaking here. Verse 10. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but him that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Keep that in mind. We're going to be reading about that fire next verse after uh, this. Verse 12. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, whose fan is in his hand and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat, his wheat into the garner, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Let's go back to Jeremiah, verse 28. The prophet that hath a dream, let him tell a dream. And he that hath my word, let him speak my word faithfully, what is the chaff to the wheat? That's right. 
A dream is chaff. God's word is the wheat, the bread of life. Verse 29. Is not my word like as a fire? Ah. Is not my word like as a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh a rock in pieces? Therefore, behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that steal my words, every one, from his neighbor. Behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that use their tongues and say, He saith. Behold, I am against them that prophesy false dreams, saith the Lord, and do tell them and cause my people to err by their lies and by their lightness. Yet I sent them not, nor commanded them. Therefore they shall not profit this people at all, saith the Lord. And when this people, or the prophet, or a priest, shall ask thee, saying, What is the burden of the Lord? Thou shalt then say unto them, What burden? I will even forsake you, saith the Lord. And as for the prophet and the priest and the people that shall say the burden of the Lord, I will even punish that man and his house. Thus shall ye say every one to his neighbor and every one to his brother, What hath the Lord answered? And, and what hath the Lord spoken? And the burden of the Lord shall ye mention no more. For every man's word shall be his burden. For ye have perverted for ye have perverted the words of the living God, of the Lord of hosts, our God. Thus shall thou say to the prophet, What hath the Lord answered thee, and what hath the Lord spoken? But since ye say the burden of the Lord, therefore thus saith the Lord, because ye say this, the burden of the Lord, and I have sent unto you, saying, Ye shall not say the burden of the Lord. In other words, they're saying, doing what the Lord says and, and believing what he tells you is a burden. That's what they're basically saying here, people. Verse 39, Behold, I, even I, will utterly forget you, and I will forsake you, and the city that I gave you and your fathers, and cast you out of my presence. And I will bring an everlasting reproach unto you, and a perpetual shame which shall not be forgotten. Now let's go to Isaiah chapter 66. 66 chapters in the Bible. I mean, uh, in Isaiah, and there's 66 books in the Bible. Verse 1. Thus saith the Lord, The heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that ye build unto me? And where is the place of my rest? See, that's not going to be no earthly temple built by hands in Jerusalem for the Antichrist. Verse 2. For all those things hath mine hand made, and all those things have been, saith the Lord. But to this man will I look, even to him that is poor, and of a contrite spirit, and trembleth at my word. What does contrite mean? It means to break or bruise. Literally broken hearted for sin, deeply affected with grief and sorrow for having offended God, humble. Uh, if you want to read, Psalms 51.17 gives you the definition right out of the Lord's Word. But to this man will I look, even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit, and trembleth at my words. He that killeth an ox as if he slew a man. That's right. In the end times, killing an ox... Sacrificing a lamb is going to be an abomination. He that killeth an ox 
is as if he slew a man and he sacrificed a lamb as if he cut off a dog's neck. He that offereth an oblation as if he offered swine's blood. He that burneth incense as if he blessed an idol. Yea, they have chosen their own ways, and their soul delighteth in their abominations. Verse 4, Isaiah 66 and verse 4. I also will choose their delusions. Oh boy, what is that? Webster's 1828, the act of deluding, deception, Misleading of the mind, false representation, an illusion, error, or mistake proceeding from false views. God says, I also will choose their delusions. He's gonna, God's going to make them believe something that is not true. God is going to make them believe something that is not true. I also will choose their delusions and will bring their fears upon them because when I called, none did answer. When I spake, they did not hear, but they did evil before mine eyes and choose that in which I delighted not. Hear the word of the Lord, ye that tremble at my word, your brethren that hated you, that cast you out for my name's sake, say, said, let the Lord be glorified, but he shall appear to you, but he shall appear to you joy, and they shall be ashamed. A voice of noise from the city, a voice from the temple, a voice of the Lord that rendereth Recompense to his enemies. See, sometimes those who teach the truth that nobody wants to listen to, oh, you're being harsh, you're being judgmental. Oh, you're horrible. God loves everybody. He wants he 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 is so loving and accepting. Yeah. Tell that to Esau. Malachi chapter 1, where God says he hated Esau. But, but, that's the Old Testament chaplain. Bob, you just don't get it. God's, God's a God of love. Yes, God loves those that love him. And he first loved us before we loved him. But God has enemies. All right, let's go to Ezekiel chapter 14. What does the Lord say about false prophets? Now, Ezekiel is one of those books like Jeremiah, pronouncing judgment upon an evil and wicked generation. And if you think Jeremiah's and Ezekiel's people were any different than America or the European Union today, I think you're I think you'd be mistaken. But that's just hey, just my opinion and who am I? Ezekiel 14:1 Then came certain of the elders of Israel unto me and sat before me. And the word of the Lord came unto me saying, Son of man, these men have set up their idols in their heart and put the stumbling block of their iniquity before their face. They have the stumbling block of their wickedness and their sin before their face. Should I be inquired of at all by them? In other words, these people are evil. And they think that they're going to come here and, and, and ask me something? Verse 4, Therefore speak unto them and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Every man of the house of Israel that setteth up his idols, idols in his heart. Uh, what's an idol? It could be a 
god of stone, a god of wood, a god of silver. It could be sex. It could be money. It could be a lot of different things. Thus saith the Lord God, Every man of the house of Israel that setteth up his idols in his heart, and putteth the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face, and cometh to the prophet, I, the Lord, will answer him that cometh according to the multitude of his idols, that I may take the house of Israel in their own heart, because they are all estranged from me through their idols. Therefore say unto the house of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God, Repent. Boy, that's a word you don't, that's a dirty word nowadays. You don't hear that word very often anymore. Thus saith the Lord God, Repent and turn yourselves from your idols and turn away your faces from all your abominations. What's an abomination? That's a sin that God really, really hates. Like sodomy. Sodomy is an abomination. Witchcraft, an abomination. Practicing magic, an abomination. Wow. And turn away your faces from all your abominations. And every one of the house of Israel, or of the stranger that sojourneth in Israel, which separateth himself from me, and setteth up his idols in his heart, and putteth the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face, and cometh to a prophet to inquire of him concerning me, I, the Lord, will answer him by himself, by myself. And I will set my face against that man and will make him a sign and a proverb. And I will cut him off from the midst of my people. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. Ouch. Verse 9, listen carefully. And if the prophet be deceived, when he hath spoken a thing, I, the Lord, have deceived that prophet. Now, we're not talking about people that are obedient to the Lord. No, we're talking about those that are disobedient, that practice abominations, the things that God hates. And if the prophet be deceived when he hath spoken a thing, I, the Lord, have deceived that prophet. And I will stretch out my hand upon him and will destroy him. And I will stretch out my hand upon him and will destroy him from the midst of my people Israel. And they shall bear the punishment of their iniquity, the punishment of the prophet shall be even as the punishment of him that seeketh unto him that the, God, that the house of Israel may go no more astray from me, neither be polluted any more with all their transgressions, but that they may be my people, and I may be their God, saith the Lord God. Wow. God will deceive you in your wickedness. All right, let's go to 2 Chronicles chapter 18, verse 1. Now Jehoshaphat had riches and honor and abundance and enjoined affinity with Ahab. Now Jehoshaphat was the king of Judah, and he was a good king. Ahab was king of Israel. Ahab was what we call a bad egg. Uh, how do we know that? Well, 
How about 1 Kings 16.30? And Ahab, the son of Omri, did evil, did evil in the sight of the Lord above all that were before him. Ooh. And Ahab, the son of Omri, did evil in the sight of the Lord above all that were before him. Ahab, bad news bears. And Jehoshaphat had riches and honor and abundance and joined affinity with Ahab. Verse 2, And after certain years he went down to Ahab to Samaria, and Ahab killed sheep and oxen for him in abundance and for the people that he had with him, and persuaded him to go up with him to Ramoth Gilead. And Ahab king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, Oh, but Chaplain Bob, Israel and Jew is the same thing, right? No. Ahab is king of Israel, and Jehoshaphat was king of Judah. Two different kings, two different capitals, Samaria and Jerusalem, two different peoples. Why does everybody say, oh, well, Jew means everybody, everything? No, it doesn't. Read Jeremiah 3.8, where God divorced Israel. Throw that into that those people's face. And Ahab, king of Israel, said unto Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, Wilt thou go with me to Ramoth Gilead? And he, Jehoshaphat, answered him, I am as thou art, and my people as thy people, and we will be with thee in the war. See, Ahab wanted to go to Ramoth Gilead because he was in a war. And Jehoshaphat, the good king, said unto the king of Israel, Inquire, I pray thee, at the word of the Lord today. Therefore the king of Israel gathered together of prophets four hundred men and said unto them, Shall we go to Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall I forbear? And they said, Go up, for God will deliver it into the king's hand. Four hundred prophets. Oh yeah, the kind of prophets that the Lord deceives. Those kind of prophets. But Jehoshaphat smelled something fishy. Verse 6. But Jehoshaphat said, Is there not here a prophet of the Lord besides that we may inquire of him? And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, There is yet one man by whom we may inquire of the Lord, but I hate him. For he never prophesied good unto me, but always evil. The same as Micaiah, the son of Imlah. And Jehoshaphat said, Let not the king say so. And the king of Israel called for one of his officers and said, Fetch quickly Micaiah, the son of Imlah. And the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, sat either of them on his throne, clothed in their robes, and they sat in a void place at the entering in of the gate of Samaria, and all the prophets prophesied before them. Yeah, all the false prophets. And Zedekiah, the son of Chenanah, had made him horns of iron, and said, Thus saith the Lord, With these, with these thou shalt push Syria, until they be consumed. And all the prophets prophesied so, saying, Go up to Ramoth Gilead and prosper, for the Lord shall deliver it into the hand of the king. And the messenger that went to call Micaiah spake to him, saying, Behold, the words of the prophets, the word of the prophets declare good to the king with one assent. Let thy word, therefore I pray thee, be like one of theirs. And speak thou good. In other words, we want you to agree with all the false prophets. Verse 13. And Micaiah said, As the Lord liveth, even what my God saith, that will I speak. And when he was come to the king, the king said unto him, Micaiah, shall we go to Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall I forbear? And he said, Go ye up and prosper. For they shall be delivered into your hand. 
I'm sure he said that in a very uh, bobbish, sarcastic voice. Go ye up and prosper, and they shall be delivered into your hand. And the king said unto him, How many times shall I adjure thee that thou say nothing but the truth to me in the name of the Lord? Uh, adjure, that means um, swear to me by the name of God, basically. How many times shall I adjure thee that thou say nothing but the truth to me in the name of the Lord? Then he said, I did see all Israel scattered upon the mountains as sheep that have no shepherd. Well, the king was the shepherd. So they were not going to have a shepherd. And the Lord said, These have no master. Let them return, therefore, every man to his house in peace. And the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, Did I not tell thee that he would not prophesy good unto me but evil? Oh yeah, I told you. This guy never says anything good about me. Well, a duh, Ahab. Verse 18, again he said, Therefore hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting upon his throne. Now here's the prophet speaking. I saw the Lord sitting upon his throne and all the host of heaven standing on his right hand and on his left. What's the host of heaven? The angels. Verse 19, listen to this carefully. And the Lord said, Who shall entice Ahab, king of Israel, that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? What do you mean fall? Is he going to stub his toe and trip? No, he's going to fall down dead. Who shall entice Ahab, king of Israel, that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead. And one spake, saying after this manner, and another saying after that manner. Then came, uh, then there came out a spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will entice him. And the Lord said unto him, Wherewith? In other words, you're going to entice him? How? Verse 21. And he, the spirit, said, I will go out and be a lying spirit, a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets, the false prophets. And he said, I will go out and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And the Lord said, Thou shalt entice him, and thou shalt also prevail. Go out and do even so. Now, this is the Lord's spirits, people. This is not the devil's spirits. These are the Lord's spirits. Verse 22. Now, therefore, behold, the Lord hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of these thy prophets, and the Lord hath spoken evil against thee. Wow. The Lord puts a lying spirit. The Lord sends delusions. False prophets. But Chaplain Bob, you just don't understand. God loves everybody. Then Zedekiah, the son of Chen Chenana, came near and smote Micaiah upon the cheek and said, Which way went the Spirit of the Lord from me to speak unto thee? And Micaiah said, Behold, Thou shalt see on the day when thou shalt go into an inner chamber to hide thyself. Oh, yeah. All right, go to Second Chronicles chapter 19. Keep this in mind, people. Verse 1. Now, remember, Jehoshaphat's the good king of Judah. And Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, returned to his house in peace to Jerusalem. And Jehu, the son of Hanani, the seer. Now, what's a seer? A seer is just an old time, Old Testament word for prophet. You know, you look at the word S E E C, seer, uh, because they were considered prophets because they could see the future. That's why they were called seers. 
And Jehu, the son of Hanani, the seer, went out to meet him. So here it is. The prophet is going out to meet Jehoshaphat, the good king, the prophet, and said to King Jehoshaphat, Shouldest thou help the ungodly? Should you help the ungodly and love them that hate the Lord? What? But, but my church says that we're supposed to love everybody. Really? Are we supposed to love Satan? Are we supposed to love Satanists that belong to the church of Satan? Really? Uh, uh, really? Are, are you sure? But, but Chaplain Bob, you just don't know. That's Old Testament. That doesn't apply to us. You're in the wrong dispensation. Shouldest thou help the ungodly and love them that hate the Lord? Therefore is wrath upon thee from before the Lord. Wow. Now remember, Jehoshaphat's a good king. And the prophet asked him, Should you help the ungodly and love them that hate the Lord? Good question. Should Christians help the ungodly and love them that hate the Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore is wrath upon thee from before the Lord. You want to have wrath from the Lord? Bless those that hate Jesus. Help those that hate Jesus. Love those that hate Jesus. They're going to be shocked when they find out that they're going to be in the middle of the tribulation and they're either going to deny Jesus to save their skin and live or they're going to get their heads cut off. Shouldest thou help the ungodly and love them that hate the Lord? Therefore is wrath upon thee from before the Lord. Nevertheless, there are good things found in thee and that thou hast taken away the groves out of the land and has prepared thine heart to seek God. See, Jehoshaphat was not totally without merit. Now, does this apply to us in the end times? How about 2 Thessalonians chapter 2? Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, Okay, what's this talking about? The coming of the Lord and us being gathered together. This is clearly talking about the resurrection, or if you want to use the word rapture that doesn't appear in the Bible, you can. But, verse 2, That ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means. Don't be tricked. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day, what day? The second coming. For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. The, the resurrection of the church cannot possibly happen until the man of sin, the son of perdition, is revealed. The Antichrist, the beast, John in Revelation calls him the beast. Uh, I mean, okay. And that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is wish worshipped, so that he is God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Now, unless this happened in 70 AD, this has got to be future. Uh, Preterus, preterus, preterus will tell you that, well, that's happened in the past. What? I don't think so. But what do I know? Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? And now you know that with, uh, what withholdeth, that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way, and then shall that wicked be revealed, 
whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. False miracles, people. Verse 10. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, God, not Satan, God shall send them strong delusion. God's going to trick them. God's going to deceive them. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation. What? Chaplain Bob, that's that's election. That's that's Calvinism. That's false. Really? I mean, argue with Paul. Because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. I would love to think that God chose me from the beginning for salvation. I, I just, you know, I don't know. Why would he choose me? I have no idea. Wasn't because of anything good that I ever did. I'll tell you that right now. Nothing. All right, let's go to 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 14. Now, here's the gospel, people. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, that's the gospel. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. What do you mean sleep in Jesus? Well, that's a euphemism for dead. For this we say unto you by the word of God, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord, let's talk about the end times, the coming of the Lord, shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. Oh yeah, a secret rapture always happens with a shout, right? And with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. Remember that, trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. And I've said it a hundred times and I'll say it a hundred times more. If we're not meeting the Messiah in the clouds to meeting the Lord in the air, it's the wrong Messiah. Now people will use this as a proof verse of the pre-trib rapture. Where in the world does it say this is happens before the tribulation? Can somebody show me, please? Because I can't find it. All right. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. I guess we'll go to verse 50. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. Uh, okay, the uh, Thessalonians talked about a trump. Here, Corinthians is talking about another trump, but it says it's the last trump. Do you know that there are seven trumps in the book of Revelation? And Jesus comes at the seventh one which is the last one, and that's at the end of the tribulation. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, 
and we shall be changed. Where do they come up with this, uh, oh, I'm having a pre-trib rapture dream. What is the chaff to the wheat? I'm reading you the bread of life, the wheat. You know, I've had some dreams, but I generally don't uh, talk about them. Because most of the dreams I have are not very good. I had a dream once of drones all over the United States hunting down Christians. Not a very good thing to have a dream about. I consider that more of a nightmare. And today is October 15th. Halloween is what, two weeks away, approximately? Yeah, it's like a living nightmare. So, should we be blessing those that hate the Lord Jesus Christ? Should we be giving aid and comfort to them that hate Jesus Christ? You will find three things that always seem to go together. I've had people tell me I'm wrong, but I've never seen them give me a proof. The pre-trib rapture, Zionism, and dispensational theology. It's like a three-legged stool. You chop one of the legs off and it falls, they all fall down. You know, how, how can, if we're changed at the last Trump, and there's seven Trumps in the book of Revelation, and the seventh one happens at the end of the tribulation, where do they come up with, where, you know, the pre-trib rapture? Where does that come up with? And if they're blessing the group of people over in the Middle East that hate the name Jesus, that hate Jesus, that says he performed his miracles by the power of the devil, which is the unpardonable sin, by the way, but, 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 Chaplain Bob, you just don't understand. Oh, I understand perfectly. Oh, yeah, I sure do. Second Chronicles 19, verse 2, And Jehu, the son of Hanani, the seer, went out to meet him and said to King Jehoshaphat, Shouldest thou help the ungodly and love them that hate the Lord? Therefore is wrath upon thee from before the Lord. Oh, you forgot that one, huh? All right, well, I'm glad I reminded you. All right, let's go to the book of Mark. New Testament, chapter 3, verse 1. And he, Jesus, and he entered again into the synagogue. Now, who hangs out in the synagogue? Uh, give you a hint. It's not the Romans. And there was a man there which had a withered hand. And they, who's they? They, they're in the uh, synagogue. And they watched him, whether he would heal him on the Sabbath day, that they might accuse him. And he saith unto the man which had the withered hand, Stand forth. And he saith unto them, Is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath days, or to do evil, to save life, or to kill? But they held their peace. In other words, Jesus asked them a question, but they wouldn't answer him. Verse 5, And when he had looked round about on them with anger, Jesus looked on them with anger, people, being grieved for the hardness of their hearts. He saith unto the man, Stretch forth thine hand. And he stretched it out, and his hand was restored whole as the other. And the Pharisees went forth. Ah, uh, who's the Pharisees? A denomination of the people that hang out in the synagogue. And the Pharisees went forth and straightway took counsel with the Herodians against him, how they might destroy him. Who are the Herodians? Uh, the family of Herod. You know, Herod, the guy that, uh, the king of Judea that killed all the children at Bethlehem? Yeah, that Herod. I uh, don't think um, I don't think Herod is liked very much. Verse seven. But Jesus withdrew himself with his disciples to to the sea, and a great multitude from Galilee followed him, and from Judea. 
and from Jerusalem and from Idumea and from beyond Jordan, and they about Tyre and Sidon, a great multitude, when they had heard what great things he did, came unto him. And he spake to his disciples that a small ship should wait on him because of the multitude, lest they should throng him. For he had healed many, insomuch that they pressed upon him for to touch him as many as had plagues. Verse 11. And unclean spirits, devils, demons, and unclean spirits, when they saw him, fell down before him and cried, saying, Thou art the Son of God. Even the devils know who he, Jesus, is. How come those that hang out in the synagogue don't? Verse 12. And he straightly charged them that they should not make him known. And he goeth up into a mountain, and calleth unto him whom he would. And they came unto him. And he ordained twelve that they should be with him, and that he might send them forth to preach. Uh, who's the twelve? Uh, even Judas Iscariot. I don't think I would want to hear the gospel of Judas, but... Hey, that's just me. And to have power to heal sickness and to cast out devils. Do you know that the twelve had power to heal sickness? Even Judas Iscariot had power to heal sickness and cast out devils. And Peter he surnamed Peter, and Simon he surnamed Peter, and James the son of Zebedee, and John the brother of James, and he surnamed them Boanerges, that is sons of thunder and Andrew and Philip and Bartholomew and Matthew and Thomas and James the son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus and Simon the Canaanite now please don't be fooled into thinking Simon was a Canaanite by blood he probably lived in the land of Canaan I was born in Kentucky am I a Kentuckian uh well, I've lived in Florida probably 80% of my life. So am I a Floridian? Well, I don't know. I, haven't, I wasn't born here. I've lived in Denver. I've lived in Knoxville. I've lived in Heilbronn, Germany. Does that make me German? I, think, I don't think Simon was a Canaanite by blood. I'm sorry. Now, Judas, maybe, but not, not Simon. And Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him, and they went into an house. And the multitude cometh together again, so that they could not so much as eat bread. That's crowded. And when his friends heard of it, they went out to lay hold on him. For they said, He is beside himself. In other words, he's crazy. And the scribes, who were the scribes? They were Jews that were the copyists of the, the Bible. Yeah, he's beside himself. He's crazy. Don't listen to this guy. Verse 22. And the scribes which came down from Jerusalem, who, who hangs out in Jerusalem? Take a guess. The synagogue people. And the scribes which came down from Jerusalem said, He hath Beelzebub, and by the prince of the devils casteth he out devils. So they're basically accusing Jesus of casting out Satan by the power of Satan. Verse 23. And he called them unto him and said unto them in parables, How can Satan cast out Satan? And if a kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan rise up against himself and be divided, he cannot stand, but hath an end. No man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he will first bind the strong men, and then he will spoil his house. Listen carefully. Verse 28. Verily I say unto you, all sins shall be forgiven unto the sons of men, all sins shall be forgiven unto the sons of men, and blasphemes wherewith soever they shall blaspheme. 
But he that shall blaspheme against the Holy Ghost hath never forgiveness, but is in danger of eternal damnation, because they said, He hath an unclean spirit. They said Jesus was possessed of the devil. He had a demon. That's what, and guess what group of people teach that to this day? And you wonder why when you preach to them, they can't hear the gospel. Uh, the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit? The unpardonable sin? No, never forgiveness? Who is this group of people? Well, they hang out. They were in Jerusalem, and they hang out in the synagogues. Uh, does that give you an idea of who I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. So, should Christians be helping and blessing these people that hate Jesus? Uh, what do you think? Uh, and you wonder why God's wrath is going to be upon the church. Keep having those pre-trib rapture dreams, people. Keep blessing those that hate Jesus. See how it ends up for you. Let me know. Well, I already know. Now, I'm not saying because I'm claiming to be a prophet, but I just know the Word of God, and I know what the Word of God says concerning these matters. Let's go to Mark 13, verse 1. And as he, Jesus, as he went out of the temple, one of his disciples saith, saith unto him, Master, see what manner of stones and what buildings are here. Oh yeah, look at this magnificent structure. And Jesus answering said unto him, Seest thou these great buildings? There shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Uh, but, but, but what about the wailing wall? Well, you got a choice. If you want to believe the wailing wall is part of the temple, then Jesus is a liar. Or Jesus is telling the truth, and the wailing wall is not what it's purported to be. You could take your pick. Uh, I pick Jesus. Seeing thou these great buildings, there shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives over against the temple, Peter and James and John and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign when all these things shall be fulfilled? In other words, what's it going to be like in the end times? Verse 5, And Jesus answering them began to say, Take heed, lest any man deceive you. Don't be tricked. Don't be deceived. Verse 6, For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And when ye shall hear of wars and rumors of war, be ye not troubled, for such things must needs be, but the end shall not be yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be earthquakes and divers places, and there shall be famines and troubles, these are the beginnings of sorrows. You know, people, if the pre-trib rapture crowd, they don't believe they're going to be here for this. Oh, famines? That's not for us. We're the church. God would never do that to us. I mean, if, if why do you think God put this in here? Just to fill up space in the Bible? Well, you know, the, I, I think the Bible should be a little bit longer, a little thicker. Maybe I'll throw in some, uh, some extra things. No. They're in here for a warning. And if you choose to ignore the warning, oh, well, I don't care. And there shall be famines and troubles. These are the beginning of sorrows. But take heed to yourselves, for they, who's they? For they shall deliver you up to councils and in the synagogues. Oh, that's who they are. For they shall deliver you up to councils and in the synagogues. Ye shall be beaten and ye shall be brought before rulers and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them. And the gospel must first be 
published among all nations. But when they shall lead you and deliver you up, take no thought beforehand what ye shall speak, neither do ye premeditate. But whatsoever shall be given you in that hour, that speak ye. For it is not ye that speak, but the Holy Ghost. In other words, don't be thinking about what you're going to say if they're bringing you to the councils and then the synagogues for Christ's sake. Don't think about what you're going to say. The Lord himself, his Holy Spirit, will speak through you. Verse 12, Now the brother shall betray the brother to death, and the father of the son, and the children shall rise up against their parents, and shall cause them to be put to death. And ye shall be the love of Jesus. That's the modern translation. No. Verse 13, And ye shall be hated, hated for all of all men for my name's sake. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. But Chaplain Bob, I said a sinner's prayer at a Billy Graham revival, and, and I was told, once saved, always saved, in eternal security. And no matter what I do, I'm saved. Well, verse 13 here says, And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. That's words of Christ in red, people, in case you don't know what that means. That means those are words that Jesus spoke himself. How about Matthew 10, verse 32? Jesus speaking, Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father, which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father, which is in heaven. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. But what about that Christmas song, Jesus? You know, peace on earth, goodwill toward men. Uh, maybe we ought to listen to Jesus and not Christmas songs. What do you think? Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I am not come to send peace, but a sword. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father, and the daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and a man's foes, or his enemies. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. He that findeth his life shall lose it. And he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. He that receiveth you, receiveth me, and he that receiveth me, receiveth him that sent me. He that receiveth a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward, and he that receiveth a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. And whosoever shall give to drink unto one of these little ones a cup of cold water only in the name of, the, of a disciple Verily I say unto you, he shall in no wise lose his reward. So yeah, why does YouTube keep uh, showing all these pre-trib rapture dreams? You know, when Hollywood starts making movies with Nicolas Cage, you know, the guy that played Ghost Rider, the flaming skeleton on the, the motorcycle running all over the place, and picking him for the, the star of Left Behind, you know the jig is up. Oh, yeah. When Hollywood starts teaching Christians uh, Bible doctrines, you know you're in trouble. Oh, yeah. I hope you learned something. I know this is a compilation of a lot of stuff I've taught in the past, but, you know... It's things we need to know. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name, amen.